Hello, my name is Jay and this is Mark. Mark, one of the questions we always get at E2 Language is, how do I prepare for TOEFL in 30 days? Okay, so I've got less than a month to prepare for my TOEFL test. What's the first thing I should do? The first thing you should do when preparing for TOEFL or any test really is seek assistance. One month is not a lot of time and you know you might be tempted to try and study by yourself but you don't want to be one week or two weeks out and then suddenly decide you know what i need help understanding the test as well as you can could make a big difference it could make the difference between getting the score you want or not cool very good point i totally agree now we're going to go through a lot of detail in this video about how best to prepare for toefl and if you want that in a PDF form, in a downloadable form, in the description below, you can click that link for the Get Started checklist. Let's start with tip number one though, learn the tasks. So there's a lot going on in the TOEFL test. Mm -hmm. Where do I start? Uh, the first thing to understand is that there are four sections. You've mm -hmm. got reading, listening, writing, and speaking. And there's a lot of different question types that you will want to be familiar with. Just starting with reading, you've got nine different types of questions. You've got vocab questions, sentence simplification, reference, factual information, negative factual information, inference, rhetorical purpose, insert text, prose summary, and fill in a table. Wow, okay, yeah. that's a lot. Yeah, now, of course, in the test, you don't need to sit there thinking about what they're called but you will, be, you will want to be familiar with how to handle those questions. Agree. Uh, what about listening though? Listening, you've also got a number of different types of questions. You're gonna have just for content, just for purpose, detail, function, attitude, inference, organization, and connecting content. So again, same thing. You wanna come into a school, you wanna find someone who's gonna help you understand uh, what those questions are testing you for. And keep in mind, the main thing is that these are skills that are not just important you know, to pass the test. Mm -hmm. Most people are taking TOEFL because they wanna go to university. Yeah. These are relevant university skills that you're gonna need. Absolutely. Yeah. I think these questions would really help you at college or university for sure. Now, what about the speaking part of the test? Yes, now this is where things can get a bit tricky and in the test they get pretty fast, so you'll mm. definitely want some help with this. Um, usually, you know, if you start learning or if you start studying for the TOEFL test, you might wanna start with uh, speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, you first of all got independent uh, speaking tasks. Um, in the test, you've got personal choice. Uh, then you've got integrated questions. Now this is gonna require listening and reading and speaking. Mm -hmm. So there is the integrated summarizing of an announcement or an opinion. There is then a summarizing of an academic reading and lecture. And then you just summarize a lecture. So in some cases, you've got listening, reading, speaking. In some cases, just listening and speaking. Good one. Now, I understand that there's also independent writing and integrated writing as well. Is that mm -hmm. true? That is correct. Independent essay is simple. They give you a prompt mm -hmm. or a question and you respond. Then in the integrated writing, they will give you reading and listening, and you will have to write about that. You'll be describing what things look like, what things they talked about, things like that. Cool, yeah, I think it's really important that you understand what this test looks like before test day, mm -hmm. especially for those integrated tasks, because you, know, you have to listen, take notes, then do a reading, then write, or vice versa for speaking as well. So knowing how it looks is really important. But it's also equally important or more important to know what to do. Mm. And this is where the methods come in. So number two is learn the methods. So for each of those tasks, which we just talked about, which there are many, each of them obviously has a solution. Each solution has a method that is kind of like a step-by-step -step approach that you will take to find the right answer. Now, some methods are harder to learn than others. For example, reading vocabulary is pretty simple. It's a multiple choice style question. It's actually pretty simple in terms of its function. Reading fill in a table requires you to learn a bit more of a complex method. 
Then you've got independent speaking and writing versus integrated speaking and writing as well. So there's a bit to learn there. And in addition, there's also note taking. Note taking is important, right? This is huge. And it's, it's really interesting when I have talked with students who have finished the test, mm. Uh, they're, they're all very happy because when I've been teaching, I really push them. You must get your note taking down. You need to practice it, work on it. Yeah. Uh, sometimes my students at the beginning will say, it's really hard for me mm. to listen and take notes at the same time, or I can't understand both. And I just really push them and say, don't worry, you're gonna get better at it, but you do need to practice. So I know there's probably some people out there thinking, mm. oh, I'm fine, I don't need to take notes, I'll remember. You really won't. Um, oh. And it's, yeah, it's a, it's a stressful situation as well. And you know, you, all you have are your notes for those integrated tasks. That's right, it, it almost becomes like your memory in yes. those integrated tasks. Yeah. Cool. Now, one of the things we do at E2 Language is we give you methods lessons, video-based methods lessons, which are also followed up in the live classes with our expert teachers. So if you don't want to deconstruct the test for yourself and work out the methods, which I don't recommend you do, use our methods. Our methods work. Cool. Let's look at tip number three now, which is practice. So the point here is that you want to apply these methods that you're going to learn to some practice questions. You really, uh, on the test date, you don't wanna be thinking about strategy. You don't wanna be thinking about what you're doing. You wanna have a really good feel for the questions. You wanna have a feel for how it works so that when you have the test, you just do it very quickly. Uh, practice questions are something we have an abundance of on E2. Cool, let's look at tip number four. Find your strengths and weaknesses. Okay, so you've now done an overview, you understand the question types, what they look like, etc. You've understood the methods, that is how to go through the step-by-step -step approach to them, and you've done a bit of practice. Now what you need to do is a bit like going to the doctor and finding out what's going on. What, where are you strong and where are you weak? This is really critical. So you wanna look at your overall scores for listening, reading, writing, and speaking. Uh, you also wanna find your weaknesses within the sub-skills. So not just the listening, reading, writing, speaking, but also how's your grammar? How's your oral fluency? How's your pronunciation, the clarity of your speech? How's your spelling, your vocab? How is your structure, that is your sentence level structure, your paragraph level structure, your entire essay level structure? Good, and uh, how about reading? So reading really consists of vocab and grammar and also a function. This is why the TOEFL questions are good because they test whether or not you can read for gist or detail or someone's opinion or inference or something like that. Mm. And listening is very similar. It basically consists of vocab and grammar. And again, whether you can listen for gist, detail, inference, opinion, attitude, those sorts of things. And these are all things you'll have to do in university. True, that's yeah. right. Cool, now if you want to take a diagnostic test and find out what your strengths and weaknesses are, our mock test is just for that. That's on e2language.com. Let's now look at tip number five. Focus on your weak areas. So the first thing is, of course, practice. You're gonna to wanna to practice your reading, practice your listening. Uh, if you decide that you need uh, a little bit extra work on that, then you'll wanna take some time with that. Uh, the main thing I usually say, though, is slow down mm. as you're going through it. You don't wanna just burn through practice tests or you know find a book full of five tests, go through it all quickly. You really want to be focused on it. Um, if it's reading or listening, you wanna read a, and listen a bit more outside of the test. Uh, this is really important. You're gonna build your reading speed. You're gonna build your vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of times where vocabulary is gonna be important, especially in reading. Um, while you're practicing the test, you don't just wanna get through it and then get your score and then leave. You wanna find out why the answer is what it is. So why is the right one right? and why is the wrong one wrong? That's really important. I, I totally agree. I think slowing down, really paying close attention. This is why you need good quality practice materials, by the way, because bad quality practice materials will probably confuse you more. If it is good quality, you'll be able to very clearly see, if you have the time and you can concentrate, 
why the answer is C and not D and A and B. That's extremely helpful. One of the things our teachers do in our live classes on e2language.com is good answer explanations. That can be very satisfying for reading and listening. And then when you take the test, you've already done the practice, you understand how the questions are designed, what they're looking for, and the questions are just easy. So you're not just taking the test, you're just reading and answering the questions in this way that you've been trained to do. Okay, so speaking and writing are different to reading and listening. Reading and listening you can practice by yourself or in a class, but with speaking and writing, it's all about feedback, mm. right? Yeah. Because you can write all day long, but if somebody isn't providing you feedback on your writing, you simply won't improve. So with speaking, get feedback and concentrate on the remarks that your teacher gives you with regards to pronunciation, and that includes the consonants, the consonant clusters, the vowels, the word stress, the sentence stress, the connected speech, how well you're pausing, are you hesitating too much? There's a lot that goes on with yeah. speaking. And then with writing, you also wanna get feedback and concentrate on those remarks. How's your grammar? How's your verb tenses, your prepositions, your articles, your plural nouns? What about your vocab? How are your single words or your vocabulary ranged? You have a wide range of synonyms you can draw on. What about your phrases and your collocations? What about the structure of your sentences, your paragraphs? Can you write a good introductory paragraph, good body paragraphs, a good conclusion for your essay? There's a lot going on. There's a lot to focus on, isn't there? Yeah, and your teacher needs to give you then feedback. And this is the important thing. Again, don't just look at your score. Look at the feedback understand what these mistakes are, fix them, and then internalize it. Yeah. So you don't just want to say, oh, okay, I know. You want to then practice or rewrite or ask more questions. Don't just focus on is it right or wrong or get upset when you're making mistakes. Take the time to fix those mistakes. And you know it's amazing what you can get done in 30 days. Great. Totally agree, yeah. So again, in the 30 days, we have live classes, we have the practice questions, we have the methods lessons, but we also have the feedback. You can submit the writing through to our teachers who will then give you a very comprehensive report card on your speaking and your writing. Cool, the next tip is keep a positive attitude. But Mark, I've only got 30 days, I'm freaking out. All right, so Remember, you know, you're, you might take that first day, you might take a, a mock test or a practice test, and you might get this score back. You might not be super happy with it, but just remember, you know, even in a few days, yeah. you could see that score increase. You could see your writing quality improve if you're taking that feedback, understanding it, and then making the corrections as necessary. That's, I think, the really important thing. I've seen students make, you know, small improvements every few days, and then, you know, within a couple of weeks, they're feeling a lot better about where they are. Great. Now, if you need help with your TOEFL test and you have about a month to prepare for it, you may want to download the Get Started checklist from the description below. It's going to help you to sort of chart out your trajectory towards success. My name is Jay. And I'm Mark. See you later.